So homework 14 starts out first of all with understanding the coordinate plane. When they say coordinate plane, that's just a fancy word for the graph. That you have your x-axis, which is over here. That's your horizontal one. Zero's in the middle, and just like the never line, the positive goes to the right, the negative goes to the left. And then you have your y-axis, which goes up and down. Positive numbers go up, negative numbers go down. When you have your ordered pair, or your coordinates, the x direction is first. So you do the left or right first, the y direction is second, so then the up or down. So if I'm giving the location of Rome, Rome has, happens to be down there in what they call quadrant four. The quadrants go counterclockwise. Quadrant one is your two positive directions, and then two, three, four, not that you need to know that. Rome. If I start at 0, 0 and I want to get to Rome, I do my x direction first. So I'm just going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 would be right above Rome. So my x direction, I went 5 to the right, positive 5. Then I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 down. So I went negative 9 in the y direction. So my ordered pair, 5, negative 9. So my second one says give the location of Phoenix as an ordered pair. So Phoenix over here in quadrant three, for my x direction, where, what do I have to do? I have to go negative eight. If I start at zero, I go back to negative eight. I'm right above Phoenix. And then I'm gonna go in my y direction, I'm gonna go negative nine. So if I started at zero, zero, and I went to the left eight and down nine, I end up in Phoenix. So number three, if I want to give the location of London, London's way up here in quadrant two, my x direction would be negative eight, my y direction, ten. So negative eight, ten. If I went to the left eight and up ten, I land in London. So then they're actually going to have you plot points on the graph, wanting you to understand that you have to do both directions before you can put a dot. So if I'm going to plot the point 4, negative 3, it tells me I'm going to go 4 to the right and down 3, since that's negative. So I'm starting at 0, I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right, 1, 2, 3 down, then I click, and there should only be one dot on my graph. If I'm going to plot the point negative 3, negative 4, starting at 0, what would I do? Go to negative 3, 3 to the left, 1, 2, 3, and then down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, there's my dot. So I went back to negative 3, down to negative 4, and marked my spot. And number six, if we do negative two, four, we would go two back, four up. Two back and four up, three, four. So two to the left and up four, there's my dot. Those hopefully were pretty easy. <laughs> the next ones get a little bit longer. They want you to identify if this ordered pair is a solution to whatever the equation is that they give you. So what you're doing is substituting those values in for the x and the y and checking to see if it works or not. So we're actually going to do four different problems. We're going to start by saying 7 times the x value of 1 minus 4 times the y value of 3. We're trying to check do we get negative 5 or not. So 7 times 1 is 7. Negative 4 times 3 is minus 12. 7 minus 12, hey, is negative 5, right? So that one we're going to say yes. That one is a solution. I got the right answer. Then I repeat it. Only now I'm going to use negative 3 and negative 4. So 
So 7 times negative 3 minus 4 times negative 4. 7 times negative 3 is... Negative 21. A negative 4 times negative 4 plus 16. And if we do negative 21 plus 16, we get negative 5. Hey, yeah, that one worked too. So now we do it again, only we use 4 and 2. 7 times 4 minus 4 times 2. 7 times 4 is 28 minus 4 times 2 minus 8. 28 minus 8 is not negative 5. So no, that one didn't work. And then we have to do it a fourth time. So then we're going to do 7 times negative 2 minus 4 times 6. 7 times negative 2, negative 14, negative 4 times 6, negative 24, and a negative 14 plus a negative 24 is negative 38, not negative 5, so no. Now the next one looks kind of crazy. All it says for the equation, if this wants to write now, <laughs> is which ones have a y value of 1? So all you're going to do on those ones is look at each of your ordered pairs. Which ordered pairs have a y value equal to 1? Just the last one. That's the only one. So I'm going to have no, 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 yes. Here my y value is 0, here my y value is negative 8, here my y value is negative 2. The last one is the only point that has a y value of negative 1. So sometimes it will just say x equals 5 or y equals 2, and you're just looking at your ordered pair and picking out which one is true and false. Most of them they make you do work on. <laughs> but I knew those ones drew some people off when they saw those, even though after you did them they were really easy. So I want to throw one of those on there. Most of them look like this one here. I have 2x plus 5y equals 7. I want to check to see which ones are ordered pairs. So, starting with the first one. 2 times negative 4 plus 5 times 3. If I solve that, what do I get? Negative 8 plus 15 is 7. That's what I'm looking for. So yes, that point works. And I'm going to try the next point. So 2 times my negative 9 plus 5 times my negative 4. If I do that problem, what do I get? Negative 38. Negative 18 minus 20 is negative 38. Well, that's not 7. So I'm going to check no. The next one, 2 times 7 plus 5 times 5. 39, 14 plus 25. Again, that's not 7. And then I do the last one using the 6 and the negative 1. 2 times 6 plus 5 times negative 1. Yes, that one works. I get 12 minus 5, which is 7. So yes. So we have yes, no, no, and yes. And the last one's on this page anyway. <laughs> Finding a solution to a linear equation in two variables. They want you to find any ordered pair that works. Instead of giving you ordered pairs and having you check them, they just want you to find one. It's getting you into graphing. When you do graphing, you make that little table with the x and the y, and you pick something for x or for y and solve it. So that's all we're going to do, is we're going to pick something for x or for y, and then we're going to find the corresponding answer. Doesn't matter what you pick, but there are some values that are easier than others. Zero is an easy number to work with, right? One is usually fairly easy to work with. I probably don't want to do negative 23, because that would be kind of hard to work with, right? 
So, just for fun, I'm going to say let's have x equal 0. If x equals 0, 4 times 0 minus y equals 4. Well, what happens when you take 4 times 0? It's 0. That gets rid of that, right? That's why 0 is an easy thing to plug into. Now I just need to finish solving that. If negative y equals 4, what does a positive y equal? Negative 4. Because technically what we're doing is dividing by negative 1, which just changes our signs, right? So one of our possible solutions is the ordered pair 0, negative 4. Now you could have 5 million other ones, but you only have to find one. So number 11, we want to find an ordered pair, x, y, that is a solution to the equation x plus 6y equals 9. Pick a number and tell me, do you want to put it in for x or y? You're going to pick 3, and what do you want to put it in for? x. She says, let's use x equals 3. Sounds good to me. So in for x, we're going to put a 3. 3 plus 6y equals 9. Then we're going to solve it. What do we do to solve that? Subtract the 3. 6y equals 6, and then divide by 6, so y equals 1. Now, it doesn't always come out to a nice whole number, and if you get a fraction, it's still okay to enter in your fraction answer. This one came out nice. We said when x was 3, y was 1, so 3, 1 is one of my ordered pairs that is a solution to that equation. So number 12 says find an ordered pair xy that is a solution to the equation 4x minus y equals 7. We said we could pick anything we wanted for x or for y to find our ordered pair. On Alex, they like to use 0. So on this last one, I'm going to do two different ways. First of all, I'm going to put 0 in for x. If I put 0 in for x, 4 times 0 minus y equals 7. And then, of course, we have to solve that. So when I do 4 times 0, that cancels that out because it's 0. Negative y equals 7. And then, since this is negative y, we end up dividing by negative 1. So y equals negative 7. So 0, negative 7 is one of your many possible solutions. I could have also decided that instead of putting the 0 in for x, maybe I chose to put it in for the y. If I had done that... 4x minus 0 equals 7. So solving that, the 0 would have canceled out of there. 4x would have equaled 7. And then, of course, I have to get rid of my coefficient by dividing by 4. So x equals 7 fourths. It is okay to have a fraction there, but my ordered pair then would go in the order x is 7 fourths when y is 0, and that's also another solution. So you only have to find one on Alex. They're going to do it both ways, and you can pick one way or the other, and that would work. You can also pick some other number that you want if you want to put in a 2 or a 3 or something like that, but they're going to always use zeros. And that is the end of homework day 14.